Hey guys, this is Lyle. We've got uh, Deck Profile here with, what's your name? Fletcher Thomas. And what do you do today? I uh, went undefeated and won the Minnesota Maplewood Regional with uh, Pendulum Performance. Neat. Thanks. Do you want to make your introduction? Yeah, it's a shaky keyboard wave. Alright, so let's get right into the, the deck, I guess. Unless you want something else to say anything else. Um, oh, check out... I can do it with you. Alright. Alright. Um, yeah. Triple Draco Slayer, you have to play three of this. This, this is the best Pendulum card right now, it, like, except maybe Plush Fire. But uh, yeah, it's just a straight plus one. You just send it to the extra deck and you Pendulum it back later. You just need to play it. Um, triple Samurai Cavalry. This outs like everything, basically. Uh, it's just if it attacks and it battles anything that's not a Pendulum, it dies by its card effect. Um, and it's also just an extra Pendulum monster. It's a low scale, and the low scales are much more important than the high scales because you always want to have either Draco Slayer or Flush Fire, so you uh, prioritize searching those. Triple Flush Fire. This, like, this, opening this card with either Draco Slayer or Wavering Eyes is pretty much how you win with this deck most of the time. It's just an insane advantage play. Makes a ton of Rank 4s. Rank 4s are pretty good overall. Um, double or triple Damage Juggler. Like, this card's also really good. It searches this, and it searches your other scales too. Uh, which is this. This is mostly used as a scale, but it's also actually helpful for its uh, effects. You can get over a lot of stuff. If you have it on board, it comes with Ragna Zero. Uh, it gets you a draw with Ragna Zero, which is pretty good because it's a quick effect. And then just one each of these. Um, I kind of wish I was playing two of these. There were a few times that I wanted it, but it's a bad. It's a pretty bad draw most of the time, which is why it's a little sketchy. Uh, but you need to run at least one just for the searching option. And then Reptiles for King of the Feralums. King of the Feralums is like kind of your staple XYZ monster. Because you, you get advantage off of it, you search for things that you need at any given time. This card's really important because the synchros are amazing. Uh, Ignister, obviously incredible. Uh, Omega, turn one, I made that. I think every single match I made Omega at least once. It's absolutely insane. We'll get to that later. Uh, and then this card, I put this in at the last minute. I don't know why I played it. I thought that you could pop any face of card you controlled with it to special in your opponent's end phase, but you can't. You can only pop monsters. So I never actually used its effect even. It was pretty much just like an extra trigger white if I drew it. So it wasn't bad, but I probably would have rather played another kickback. Uh, Mathematician, this is just an extra uh, perform age monster. That's pretty much it. Uh, the normal summons aren't as big of a deal because I'm playing the Gem Knight engine. Uh, the Gem Knight engines are, it's basically just an extra foolish burial, but it also gives you a double summon through Seraphonite. Because uh, you get to send Garnet and a Light. It just makes your engine bigger, and that's really all you need to do with this deck is your engine beats. Two Garnet was okay. Huh? Two Garnet was okay. Yeah, I was going back and forth between one and two. The problem, like, this makes you way less likely to draw a dead really infusion, of course, but at the cost of drawing more Garnets. But drawing Garnet's not even that bad, because a lot of the time you just pendulum monsters and overlay with them anyway. And then it's the exact same thing as any level 4 monster. Uh, and then double Denko. This card uh, definitely won me a lot of games today. Uh, people like weren't really prepared for it for the most part. It forced a warning when warning would have destroyed me any, like if I didn't have Denko. Uh, no regrets about this one. Definitely really good. Uh, Gemini Engine helps support this card too because you have double normal summons. It's really good. Foolish Burial, um, and then Triple Brilliant Fusion. These are like the same card, practically, except this is less consistent, and you get a double summon, which is nice too. What, three Wavering Eyes. Uh, I sided one of these out if I was playing against something that wasn't Pendulums most of the time, but I, like, I question whether that's even correct, because you really want to open this with Flush Fire. Like, it's just, it's really good. <laughs> that's pretty much it. it against a Pendulum deck, like, this is like the most important part of the entire matchup. Uh, it's kind of dumb. It should probably be banned with Pendulums moving forward. Uh, triple Upstart, you just need to get your engine card as much as possible, and the damage really isn't relevant, because your engine can outpace everybody's anyway, uh, and you can just OTK through the damage a lot, frequently at least. And then Triple Instant Fusion, it's just like an extra power card. You like you grind out all your opponent's back row, and then you have an Instant Fusion at the end, and it's too much for them to handle a lot of the time. Or it gets you... Um, it's like a reborn for your tuner as well. Like I'm only playing one mass chameleon, and a lot of time you need to get this again to make Ignister, because you can't get um, Draco Slayer in your extra deck. So you can instant fusion this back, sync with this one, and then overlay with the uh, Norton, which is really good. So that's the main deck. No traps. Uh, you don't need traps. They're not necessary. Uh, so I'll go to side or extra first. Whatever you want. All right, great. I'll go to extra first. It's probably more important anyways. Yeah, it is. I, I, I didn't use my side very much, honestly. 
uh, rank fours, you got your keys for OT King, and it also floats really well. Rag to zero combos with uh, damage, whatever the guy, I forgot what he was called, mirror, mirror conductor. conductor. Yeah, it's good. You can also use his uh, scale effect during your turn, but the other one's quick, which is even better. I actually didn't make this at all. I'm kind of surprised about that. It's not great. You usually make this if you can like pendulum summon him, but you don't have Draco Slayer. I, it's not great, frankly, but you need to be able to make uh, something with the Draco Slayer being on an Ignite but that's, that's like frequently win more. I don't know, this might not be necessary. Uh, two King of Fairy Lumps, this is definitely necessary. I made two of these a lot of games, at least three or four times. Uh, all the cards that this search, like the, card, the cards that this search do such varying things that it's a great utility card. It just lets you get whatever you need. Uh, Dire Wolf, you need this for popping back row at the cost of a ring for it's confusion turns into a galaxy cyclone, basically, if you need it to. Uh, and sometimes you just know that you can make a rank four and then OTK them after if like, and then it doesn't matter what their back row is at that point. Uh, I actually wanted two of these a couple times. Like, that, I might do that even. Emerald, I made this once. It wasn't really necessary, but uh, it can be helpful. Cell, we need that, obviously. It's just great. Dweller, made this like once. Um, I was gonna play two of this, and I'm really glad I didn't. It's, uh, it's just not good enough to need two. And then the Synchros, uh, Omega and Double Ignister. I never made the second Ignister, I'm not really sure if that's needed. This card is absolutely incredible. You go turn one, uh, you make this with by penduluming out your Mass Chameleon after searching it, and then during their standby you get to return your damage juggler, get an extra search, and then you make them play with one less card once they go into their main phase and do something. Uh, it's just incredible. And then you have a guaranteed 28 damage coming back to your turn, which means the chance of you OTKing them just skyrocket. And then two Norton and uh, the Seraph Knight. This doesn't actually do it because it comes up with zero zero after infusion. If you don't know that, and then uh, you just get an extra normal summon. That's it. It also stops you from being able to normal summon your mass chameleon, which is really annoying. But uh, it's worth it. So it's extra, and then side deck. This is like actually really not all that important. I didn't side very much at all today. I don't think I sided more than three cards for any matchup. Uh, breakthroughs, I played these in case I was playing a matchup where I expected uh, fiends or other floodgate monsters, but I really wasn't that worried about it because this deck has really varying outs to different sorts of floodgates. You can pendulum or you can instant fusion, or you can normal summon in special gigabyte or nefarious. There's just tons of ways to outgate that stuff. Vanities is really the only problem, and you just kind of hope they don't have that, or you uh, samurai, samurai outs vanities. Two of these, I never used this even. It seemed like it was good in theory for like Magic Spectre, but uh, honestly, like you don't really need this to win. I'm not really sure it's necessary. Like traps, you need like traps are needed when you need to be able to beat your opponent's engine because yours isn't big enough, and that's just not a problem for this deck. Uh, two Iron Wall. This also wasn't that needed. I did win one Infer uh, Inferno game because of it. Um, it's not that necessary overall though. Two Storms. I wanted this for heavy back decks. Like if I played Tellers, I probably would have slided this in. But there just isn't enough stuff to side out for all like the back row here. I had. Like I had two MSTs and a Galaxy Cycle, and I like very rarely sided out. Like there's just like too much back row in here compared to how big my engine is, and I just didn't have enough stuff to side out. Uh, Centric as well falls in that category. I never sided this. I never sided both of these. I sided one a couple times. Um, but your engine just outs floodgates already, so it's just not necessary. And then two Maxis and a Denko. Uh, I didn't play any big deck back row decks, so I didn't side the third one of these in. Um, oh, I played Magic Spectre once, but I didn't go. In, I wasn't going second. I had only side this. I was going second, and then I think I sided one of these in once. Yeah, so, do you mean the Maxis or the Eccentrics of the other choice are not worth? Um, eccentric, maybe. I'm up in the air about Eccentric being worth it in the main deck. I think Denko is just kind of better though, because it's also level four, so you can uh, get your engine outs with the rank fours. And then high scales aren't really that necessary because your best your best pendulum cards are already your high scales. And then you, like this is this is really bad if you're going first. It's just really bad. Like I need to combo out going first and make Omega because that's, that's how you win. So yeah. So that, Anything else you want to say? Um, I think this is the best deck. I don't I don't think I don't think I played the best build, but I think it's the best deck. I'm not sure if the Demon Knight engine is correct, but it seems good. Yeah. That's it. Uh, oh, uh, shout out to um, team. Yu-Gi-Oh! Plus One. I post videos there every once in a while. Uh, so do some of my good friends. They have good content. Team Yu-Gi-Oh! Plus One, all the way. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate it.